Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. I'm Frank. So, it's one of the most infuriating things when you're 3D printing. The print didn't finish. We've all had it happen and it can be super aggravating. Whatever the case may be, filament jam, power outage, maybe one of your kids knocked the print over because it was pretty and they wanted to touch it. Whatever the case may be, hopefully by the end of this video, I'll have shown you a new or different way, maybe you haven't known before, to taking a print that looks like this and getting it to come out something like this. Let's get started. Now, two things I want to address first before we go into this. This isn't going to save every print. This isn't an end-all, be-all, fix every issue. It's going to be circumstantial. Some prints just can't be fixed or they're not worth fixing due to the detail or the complexity of the part. Now, in this video, you're going to notice that we're going to go back in time. For some reason, I never filmed an intro for this video, but most of it was recorded at the old place. So we're going to go back to all my printers. We're going to go back to England. It's going to be kind of fun and a little weird. In this video, a Nova helmet failed, and you guys are familiar with my Nova helmets, and it just stopped printing. But that's a very easy helmet to continue to print. Now, there are ways to edit the G-code, there's more advanced ways to continue the print, but in this case, the print had unadhered from the bed, and that's the worst thing that can happen, but it's not the end of the world. So I'm gonna show you how to utilize the printer, get a measurement using the printer, slice the rest of the G-code, print the remaining part, and then you can go through with some PLA welding and some sanding, and call it a day and finish the print. So bear with me through this one. And again, hopefully you'll learn something by the end of it that you can utilize if you ever have a really large failed print and you just don't want to reprint the entire thing. So let's hop back to the uh, to Jolly Old England and we'll get started. Now, it might be a little hard to hear in here, but basically every printer is gonna have a move function. Now, hopefully you were lucky enough where the print thought it finished. The printer was just sitting here. My filament runout sensor didn't kick on properly. So the print thinks it finished. Now it's parked where it finished. So the Z axis height is 251 and don't really worry about anything else. So that means the print would have been about that tall had it actually finished. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move that, um, we're gonna use that move function to lift the print back up and use the nozzle head to measure the very top. Now, if you don't have the touch screen, it's gonna look something like this. And say you had the power outage, say you weren't as fortunate enough to have the print actually finish like this. Go ahead, turn the printer on, and you're gonna to wanna to do a Z, um, an auto home. And while that auto homes, we'll go over here and I'll start messing around with this one. So now we're gonna lower the Z height and we're gonna move the nozzle until we can get it to touch the very top of the print. So let's go ahead and move this over. Let's say like right about there. And then we're gonna begin raising it up. Now on the printer itself, you can adjust how much you adjust, um, how much it adjusts by. Right now I'm moving by 10 millimeters at a time. I can adjust it to one, I can adjust it to 0.1. So go slow, cause you don't want to crash into the print. All right, so I have the nozzle directly above the print now. I'm getting as close as possible. Sorry, the lighting in here sucks, but you guys should be getting the idea of what I'm doing. Oh, right there. That is perfect. The nozzle is just barely touching the print. It's hard to see on the five plus. I apologize for that, but it is resting directly on the rim of the helmet, which means this print itself is 179.6 millimeters tall. Now you can fine tune this all you want, but I like that number. I'd probably say 179 total. I'd round down because I'd rather print too, um, a little mu too much rather than not enough. So I can say now that that print is 179 millimeters tall. I need to print the rest of it. Now we auto homed our ender over here. So now everything's zeroed out. So we can go to um, prepare, we can move axis. And we're going to move the Z up. I don't know, let's say 60. I'm gonna measure this. It's just some random print, but I wanna take the height measurement of it using the printer. And we're gonna get the nozzle into the center. Just like that. All right, now go back to the Z. Now I'm gonna do my best to get the nozzle to touch the very corner of that print and we'll know how tall it is. 
right there. That print is a is 71 millimeters tall. Now again, you can fine tune this. You can do the points. I can go a 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. That's a little better actually. So 171.5. Now if I knew how long the Iron Man mask was itself, I could then use this, stand it up straight in Cura, and then drop this through the bed 71 millimeters because I know that's how much already printed. So with these numbers, we're, we'll, we'll play with this one, 71 millimeters, and we'll, we, I want to finish the Nova helmet, and that's going to be 179 millimeters. So let's get back to the program and uh, slice up the rest. So we're here in the computer room, and hopefully when you go and drop the SD card, hopefully you still have the file. That's really can, that can really make a big difference on helping you align the print, because the next thing we're going to need to do is know exactly how this print tried to finish. So if you drop the SD card in, you should still have some G-code. And when you drop that G-code into Cura, it should reload. Now, you're not going to be able to do anything with this G-code except view it. Now, there are other tutorials that show you how to physically edit the G-code and make it start at a predetermined height. Um, that's great if you still have the G-code or there's a couple There's a couple benefits to that. I like doing it this way because, to, in, to my, uh, in my opinion, and for how I, my preference, I, I think it's just quicker. Print the rest of it, call it a day. You're not editing the G code. Um, I'll try to find one of those videos, maybe link it down below. Um, but this is the way I've been doing it. It's been working out pretty decent so far without having to really edit anything. So you have the file there. We know how it was oriented. It looks like I was just barely touching the back there. And we need to go and try to mimic this. That's what's crucial about um, trying to save this print. So now that we know what it looks like, we can go ahead and drop it into Cura. So we're gonna be finished printing this on my Pro V2 because I know it can handle just the remaining part of that dome, but we still need to get the orientation right. So, ooh, that looks, that looks pretty spot on actually. Now we can use our physical model to kind of look around and the very tip of it was actually touching the bed. So I wanna rotate this just a little bit more forward. Yeah, right there, cool, I like that. Now from our math earlier, we know we, it, this finished printing 179 millimeters tall. Now, if we go over to scaling over here, we have the, the percentage of the scale. Now, if you modified the scale, you need to then go and change that, which I did. These are all printed at 110 millimeters or 110 percent. Sorry. So once you have the scale figured out, this is going to give us our absolute height. Now, we know that we it, it finished printing at 179. So that looks about right. Maybe you have another one you can measure so you know how tall it's supposed to be. But now we go over to move, the um, absolute uh, dimension of it, the height of the print itself is positive zero, or zero in this case, I guess. So that means nothing is below the build plate right now. But 179 millimeters of it already printed, so let's do a negative 179. And it's going to drop it through the build plate exactly how much has already printed. Now, depending on the model, you could probably get some, you know, get a ruler, measure, use, use some reference and details to see, you know, all right. Um, the eye right here, this is, okay, this is pretty close. And there's a couple ways you can kind of cross check and verify, but I'm pretty confident with my math. Now, I always like to round down just a little bit because I'd rather print a little bit too much than not enough. So we're not really using points or anything. I think we had it at 179.5, but that's fine. We're gonna do 179 and that's all we're gonna print. Now I'm gonna do the same thing I always do. I'm gonna go and block out this center support. This is very, very model specific and this won't always apply to you. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna do a low quality kind of draft because this is just gonna be a quick and dirty print. It's just a smooth dome. We're still gonna need some type of support. And we'll do two, we'll do a raft because I just like using rafts. And then we hit slice. 13 hours, 123 grams. Ah, we're running a 20% infill. Let me change that. We don't need that. Let's do it. Let's go back to a 10, I'm glad I looked. 12 hours, 118 grams. That looks a lot better. And right here is all that's gonna print. Anything north of the bed or in the positive dimensions of the bed, that's what's gonna print. And that's what we'll be able to fuse. So we're gonna go load this on the SD card and then we're gonna go throw this on our Pro V2 and we're gonna print the rest of the helmet out. So just for some added value and because I kinda wanted to make a cool thumbnail, I'm using some red filament to finish it. There's the dome and away we go. We're printing the rest of the helmet. We'll come back in 12 hours and we'll fuse it back together. Welcome to the weirdest outro I've ever filmed. 
So as you guys can see, the helmet did finish, but I'm going to address the weird setup here. I had filmed the ending of this video. However, during the moving process, um, some of the footage got a little messed up and deleted, so I don't actually have the other finishing to this. So I'm going to do my best to kind of surmise it here, and hopefully with everything I've shown you guys, you can go and then finish a helmet. You'll learn, you know now how to measure it using the printer or some type of caliper, and then you get the remainder of it, you have it. This came out, I, I couldn't have guessed any better. There's just a little, little, little bit of overhang, but it'll sand down perfectly. Now with this continuation here, you could very simply go and PLA weld this, which I've shown you guys plenty of times before. And if you check out this picture of the Mandalorian helmet, this same Mandalorian helmet was the one that was in my other Mando video where the print had stopped and it looked exactly like this Nova helmet. So with enough sanding and just a little bit of work, a lot of bit of work, unfortunately, you can get the helmet to look like nothing ever happened. Now, like I said, printing a little bit more is definitely more beneficial to not printing enough because if this was too small, then you're going to do a lot of work trying to fill in that, that, um, the gap and how it meets up. So this came out again, I, I'm actually very impressed with how what close this got. So the, uh, this won't be hard to fill and fuse back together. I don't know if I would PLA weld the outside. I do a really, really good job. <laughs> PLA welding the inside and making it as secure as possible, but the outside, maybe just a very light surface weld, maybe you can use a 3D pen, and then you start the, the wood filler or the bondo and the sanding process, and then you can get your helmets looking pretty nice. So yeah, this video was definitely all over the place, and uh, but I definitely do hope it helped you guys understand better how to continue a print. Now, again, there are multiple ways to do this where you can edit the G-code, you can mess with the G-code, but really this is to save a print that once your printer has finished and cooled off completely, Completely. Once that print pops off the bed, it's almost impossible to continue the print back on itself. You're gonna, if you want to try that, that's totally fine. I think the, uh, the your time is better spent continuing it like this, and hopefully that really helps you guys out. If you guys haven't already, if you could consider subscribing to the channel, we're in the middle of a move. I'm obviously, I'm in a hotel room and I'm leaving back to America tomorrow. Obviously, this video will be in the future. By the time I post this one, I'll already be back in America. But I know this video is one that you guys have been asking for a lot. And I try to do these uh, more informative videos because nobody wants to throw out an entire helmet if the print just stopped halfway. It's very easy, easily fixable. So if you guys want more in the meantime, please go check out the Discord. There you can actually recommend video ideas to me. We can talk and chat. And it helps me get a better idea of what the community's like lacking and what videos I can put out there to help you guys. So there's a link for that down below. So please go check that out. It's free. Leave some comments down below of other little 3D printing and cosplay quirks and problems you guys want to know more about. I do plan on filming some more error videos, the mistakes you're going to typically need, what happens if you're painting a helmet and you know, you mess something up catastrophically and you need to sand it all back down. How far do you sand it? How do you reprime it? So I definitely want to start attacking more of the failures in 3D printing and prop making and cosplay that maybe, you know, I haven't been addressing through the channel previously. So stay tuned for that. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and you have a good day.